When it comes time to look for a tech job, you're faced with a pretty tough decision. Do you go and work for a big tech company like Microsoft, Amazon, Meta, etc., or do you go for something like a smaller startup where you can have a little bit more impact? And this is a very important decision that can really impact your entire career. So in this video, what I'm going to do is break down for you the difference between working at all of these companies as someone who's worked for all. I've worked for Microsoft, I've done contract work for a lot of other large tech companies. I've also worked for startups, ones that I've been a part of the team for and ones that I've created myself. I know exactly what it's like in all of these different environments. And at the end of this video, you will too. Now, some people think that this is an obvious decision. Of course, you should just go work in big tech, right? Get the resume stamp, make hundreds of thousands of dollars per year and be set for the rest of your life. Now, while that's a natural thing to feel, both of these paths actually have massive benefits and you shouldn't completely rule out a startup just because you might get paid less money. Now, both of these paths also have major downsides, ones that a lot of people don't talk about that'll cover in this video. So let's start by talking about what it's like to really work in big tech as someone who's done that myself and worked with, at this point, hundreds of engineers that have worked at big tech companies. So first of all, you're going to have a high salary. We're talking about minimum six figures here, even if you're at a lower tier big tech company. And if you're coming in even at an entry level, you can be expecting to make at least $120,000 to $130,000 per year just as your salary. Now you also have opportunities for bonuses. Typically you're targeting maybe a 10, 15, 20% bonus, depending on the type of company that you work for. And you'll typically have some type of stock options in the form of restricted stock units, which you'll vest over multiple years. This means that your total compensation, just as a brand new engineer, can be over $200,000 per year. And of course, as you get into the mid and senior level, you're talking about $300,000, $400,000, $500,000 per year, which is a very reasonable salary to have with a few years of experience at a large tech company. For example, one of my partners, Kevin, when he left Google, he was making around $500,000 per year with eight years of experience working as a senior software engineer. Now, what are some other benefits of a big tech company? Well, you're going to have a very structured environment. It's going to be very clear how you can progress in terms of the promotion cycles, what you need to do. And you know that if you stick around there for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, you will work your way up the ranks and it's very easy to make more money. Now at these big tech companies, you'll also have world-class mentorship. You're going to be surrounded by tons of senior principal and distinguished software engineers. And you can be working with literally some of the smartest people in the world that have all qualified for this type of job. You also typically have the best tooling. You'll have the best code quality standards, the best deployments, the best pipelines, and you will see the state of the art when it comes to deploying and writing technology. Now, generally, and this is not always true, you also have stability and you'll have a brand name recognition, which really boosts your resume and does give you a massive benefit in the future. Now, I know we've seen a lot of layoffs recently, so it's not as stable as it used to be, but big tech companies are still more stable than a random Y Combinator startup, okay? So those are most of the benefits. Those are pretty clear. And generally, if you can get a job at one of these big tech companies, it is a good idea. But if you have the ability to choose, you should consider the rest of the stuff I'm going to talk about in this video. Okay, now a few downsides of working at big tech. First of all, it's usually pretty slow. Things don't get released too quickly. You're usually working in some kind of bureaucratic, you know, political environment. It's pretty difficult to stand out, especially as a junior software engineer, and you don't really get to make that much of an impact. For example, when I was working at Microsoft, I worked on the Python extension for Visual Studio, which is a product of its own. Within the Python extension, I was working on the data science team. And within the data science team, I worked on a few really tiny little features, some of which you may have used if you've used Visual Studio code before, but it's not a massive amount of impact, right? You're not designing your own products. You're not building you know, entire features completely from scratch in a lot of cases. And it can feel a little bit monotonous and like you're not really doing anything that's of that much importance. You also just become a small piece in a giant machine, kind of like what we talked about there, where if you're working at a company like Google, you're one of 100,000 software engineers, right? I don't know the exact number is, but it's something along that. When I worked at Microsoft at that time, I think they had 160,000 employees. You're just one person. No one really knows you. Okay. So that's big tech. Let's talk about startups, right? So what is it really like to work in a startup? Now I've worked for a lot of startup like companies and I've also ran my own tech startup where I hired engineers. When you work for a startup, we're talking about companies that are usually under hundred employees, typically have some kind of funding. They could be 10 employees. They could be three employees, but they're usually pretty small, right? You're working in a very fast paced, chaotic environment, but it's also extremely exciting, right? You own the entire features that you're working on end to end. 
you get given really broad, vague tasks and just asked to come up with a solution for them. You have to figure out how to solve this and you don't have someone looking over your shoulder, you know, reviewing every single line of code that you write and you really have to think on your feet and wear a lot of different hats and get a lot of things done. Now, because of this, you just learn objectively significantly more than you would if you worked in a big tech company, right? In big companies, it's a little bit more narrow what you're working on. In startups, you could touch every area of the stack. You could be a front-end developer one day, a back-end developer, for the other day and an AI engineer on the weekend, right? Now there's also huge potential if this company takes off. If you end up working for one of the few companies that does become a unicorn company, so 1 billion in valuation or more, that is instant name recognition. You're on the founding team typically, or at least you're one of the early employees. You're typically gonna have a lower salary, but you'll have some kind of stock options to compensate for that. And for example, I know someone who was the 14th employee at Shopify and they ended up, I think, receiving 40 or $50 million when that company ended up going public because of the shares that they own. So you have a massive amount of upside and you're also close to the founders, for example, where you can have more influence on the decisions, you can network with you know really impactful people and you can go on to work for all kinds of other startups in the future if they you know start something else and bring you along with them. Okay, so those are some of the benefits. Now downsides, obviously you're gonna have a relatively low salary. When you work for startups, it's not uncommon to have 50% of the salary even lower than you would at a big tech company. For example, if you could go work at Google and make maybe 130, 140, probably more than that, at a startup, you might make 70K, 80K, and that might be a lot even for a good startup. Now, job security, right? This depends on the funding and kind of the runway that these companies have, but it's not uncommon to work for a startup that goes bankrupt in six months. That can happen, companies can mismanage their money, and if they don't have a clear path, it can be difficult to see yourself working at the company for two, three, four, five years, especially if they don't get product market fit and really succeed, right? Because these startups are growing at all costs and it's kind of they make it or they don't. So that's kind of the high level overview of the startups versus the big tech environment. But I wanna talk about some real differences that you don't hear about too often. Now in big tech, you're typically expected to have some level of deep expertise in the area that you're working on. You're working in one small portion of the code base again especially if you're a junior you're typically working in one language and one part of the stack and that's the complete opposite as a start with a startup you're working with a broad skill set you're working with multiple languages multiple areas of the code base and both of those have their pros and cons now in big tech you have this really predictable pipeline of how you deploy software how you write code who you report to whereas in startups it's completely unpredictable right now yes you have a very high upside but you really don't know what's going on day to day and it can be a little bit intimidating and overwhelming if you're not used to that environment. Now with big tech, you have that prestige, right? I work at Microsoft, I work at Google, I work at Amazon, take it from me, I'm still mentioning it, you know, four or five years later. And then at startups, you have the impact, right? Which is the complete opposite of big tech. What you're doing could legitimately be the thing that makes the difference for your company going from $1 million a year in revenue to 10. That's really how big of the impact could be. Continuing with big tech, you know, a little bit more safe, right? In terms of the job security, startups risky, as we talked about. And now I wanna talk a little bit about the salary comparison and give you an honest breakdown, okay? We've discussed this already, but I want you to hear kind of some more numbers and what you can really expect in these situations. Now with big tech, you're gonna have just a high starting salary, right? You have these optimized compensation packages and you know really clearly what the levels look like when you level up. You can just go to a website, for example, this one called levels.fyi. You can punch in any of these big companies and you can see with a relative degree of certainty how much money you're gonna get offered if you got a job at one of these companies. You know at you know L2, L4, L6, whatever the level is, this is what the pay range looks like and it's often you know pretty small range where you can guess exactly what the pay is going to be now with startups you're usually going to have a lower salary right but the thing that will make up for that is the equity now you need to be a little bit careful because sometimes the equity can be useless or can be worthless and sometimes you can get kind of screwed on the equity packages so you want to be very careful if you are working for a startup to have someone like a lawyer review the compensation package that you receive, understand your vesting schedule, the restrictions on the shares that you're given, and what the cap table actually looks like so you know to some degree what percentage of the company you actually own. We can get into this in another video, but you want to understand what dilution might look like in the future. And if you've ever watched, you know, I think it's called The Social Network, right? Or like the Facebook movie, you've seen exactly what's happened there when people haven't been careful with their equity packages. So you could literally become a millionaire overnight if this company succeeds, but only if you have the correct package. So you want to really be careful with that, okay? Now, with that in mind, because these compensation packages are so wildly different, and in one, it's very clear cut, you kind of know exactly what you're getting. Whereas in the other one, it's really like you're not sure how much this is actually gonna be worth that's being given to you, you have to ask yourself, what do you value more? 
Do you value the salary? Do you want that stability? Do you have a family, for example, where you really need to know how much money is coming in on a month by month basis and how much you reasonably stand to earn? Or are you really looking to learn more, right? Are you looking to invest in yourself, to be honest, in terms of what you learn in a startup, get that experience, then potentially move to a big tech company later on. What I typically recommend is that if you're a bit younger, if you're just coming out of school, if you already have a safety net, like you're living with your parents, for example, if you can spend even one or two years working at a startup, that is a massive benefit that a lot of times later in life, you don't have the luxury of doing. So if you have the ability to take a lower salary and to really grow in that realm, it is typically worth it, but you have to ask yourself, what's the best for you? Okay, now let's talk a little bit about work-life balance, right? So in big tech, I would say generally, you're gonna have better hours, a more predictable schedule, more paid time off, more benefits, right? And just more security and kind of knowing like when you actually have to work. And usually for big tech, you can actually get away with working only five, six, seven hours a day, especially if you're doing this remote and still you know, getting paid the same amount without someone really looking over your shoulder into everything that you're doing. Now with startups, you're just gonna have longer hours, right? There's gonna be higher pressure, tighter deadlines, more things that need to get done. There's gonna be more responsibility on your shoulder. That can be good and that can be bad. So you have to ask yourself, what kind of personality trait do you have? Do you wanna just clock in for work every day, get paid and leave? Or do you really want work to become your life? Because when you work at a startup, you kind of start identifying with that startup. That's everything you talk about. That's everything you think about. It's all the people you hang out with every single day. And that can be really consuming if you don't like that type of environment. Some people love it. I loved it when I did that and I was completely consumed by it, but I did work with some people who really just, they wanted the job to be a job and not their entire life. Okay, now skill development. We already talked about this a bit, but in big tech, you're typically gonna learn about things like clean architecture, scalable systems, how to work in a large corporation with thousands of engineers. You are gonna learn engineering best practices, right? And you're gonna understand how to design large scale systems. That's extremely valuable, but it's not always what you need to do. Now in startups, you're gonna learn how to ship things quickly, right? Make something messy, get it out fast, you know, code as fast as you possibly can and not worry about all the tiny little details. You're gonna learn more about product thinking, so how to think from the user's perspective, because a lot of times you're blurring the line between a product manager and a developer. You're also gonna learn to solve problems with limited resources. You can't just dish this out to five other devs, it's on you. You gotta figure it out and you don't have the best tools in the world. Now, another major difference you'll notice between these types of companies is the culture, okay? In big tech, you've got formal meetings, you've got documentation, structure, stand-ups, right? Like it's very familiar what you're gonna be doing and it's very set in stone. Whereas with startups, it's very flexible, it's very dynamic, it's based on instincts, it's messy, you're doing things you don't necessarily know we're gonna work. You're not talking to thousands of users before you do a feature. You're not writing the documentation or writing all of the tests. You have to ask yourself, what environment do you operate in better? Now with all that in mind, how do you make this decision? I wanna give you a quick framework or a few questions that you can kind of answer for yourself to determine what type of company you wanna work in. Now I would recommend that you pick big tech if you want structured growth, you want a stable income, it's very predictable, you want mentorship, you want brand name prestige, and you wanna understand how to write clean code and kind of the best practices for distributed systems and large scale code. Whereas with startups, you'll choose that if you want fast skill growth, you want responsibility early on, like you wanna actually have that on your shoulders, you want a chance at big equity and life-changing money, and you wanna learn both the business and the product side, as well as the development side. You also would pick this if you wanna stand out fast, right? My recommendation is typically to try to employ a hybrid approach. If you can get experience at both startups as well as big tech companies, that's really going to help your career. And the order in which you do it isn't super important, but if I could choose, this is what I would do. I would start, especially when you're younger and you have more of an ability to grind and really lock in for interviews, trying to get a job at a big tech company. You're not gonna learn as much, but you will learn some really important concepts that you won't at a startup. For example, clean code, you know, system architecture, large scale distributed systems, working in a big environment, you'll be able to see what that's like. And more importantly, you'll get that all important resume stamp in that prestige. You can now go and brand yourself as an ex Google, ex Amazon, ex Uber engineer, and you immediately garner credibility when you have one of those on your profile. It is easier to start by breaking in with an internship when you're still in school or you're still younger than to try to get back into a big tech role or into any big tech role when you're like 30, 35, 40. The younger you are, typically the easier it is to get a job there. I myself landed a job there when I was 19 years old, okay, at Microsoft. Do that for probably one to three years. You don't even need to go through a promotion cycle. And then if you're feeling like this isn't for you and you really wanna try something else, jump to a startup. 
at that point you have the credibility you have that x big tech name it's going to be very easy to get noticed by startups and you can jump in there and start having that impact that you were missing at a big tech company it also gives you the ability while you're still young early in your career to determine which you actually like better. Do you want to keep going down the startup route? Do you think you can actually make a really big difference and impact and make your equity worth something? Or do you want to go back to that stability? This is exactly what I did. I started a big tech company, got some experience there, then went into a bunch of different startups. I've kind of been back and forth since, but mostly doing my own thing and mostly working at startups. And I find I like that environment a lot better. You couldn't pay me even a million dollars right now to go work at a company like Google because I just don't want to do that. I don't enjoy that type of environment. I already got the experience and I know what it's like. So overall, there's no right or wrong choice. This is just the differences that you should consider. And if you're fortunate enough to be in a position where you can pick which one you want to go to, I hope this video helped you. And if you are someone who wants to get into a startup or into a big tech company and you're serious about making that happen in the next four months, then consider applying to my dev launch program. We've worked with hundreds of developers at this point, helped people land jobs at companies like Oracle and Microsoft, as well as some of the top startups coming out of programs like Y Combinator. So we can help you with whatever situation you have. It's a personalized one-on-one -on -one mentorship program where we understand your situation, your problems, and your goals, and we guide you along the way from people that have done it all, right? Startups, big tech, etc. Anyways, that's linked from the description down below. Hope you enjoyed, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.